Just a warning, this podcast contains mature content. Hello and welcome to On Deadline. I'm Kendra Nichols. I'm Dennis Owens. And I'm Amanda St. Hilaire. Thanks for being here. If you're listening for the first time, we are journalists for ABC 27 News in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. But on this podcast, we talk about issues that affect people all over. And that's why these are the conversations you don't hear on the news. We are different generations with different perspectives, so we don't always agree. We are? (laughs) We're getting very personal. I'm trying not to call you old, Dennis. (laughs) I won't call you young. Uh, We're getting very personal, very real, and hopefully getting you thinking. We are recording on December 18th, 2017, and the big topic today, the Me Too movement hits the Capitol. Senator Dalen Leach, a suburban Philly lawmaker accused of sexual harassment, the governor calling for him to resign in light of these uh, allegations. And this is just the beginning of these types of stories coming out of the Capitol. So also, what should we tell our kids, especially young boys, with several high-profile men being accused of sexual misconduct? Kids are surely seeing the headlines. What can we say as parents or what should we be saying? All right, so let's get to our first topic, the Philadelphia Inquirer and Philadelphia Daily News breaking the story over the weekend. Ex-staffers alleging Senator Dalen Leach crossed the line with sexual talk and inappropriate touching. The article cites 11 people who claim to have personally witnessed or been the subject of unwelcome touching and sexually charged language from the senator. Now, Leach is a Democrat from Montgomery County who has been a legislator since 2003, currently running for Congress. Leach denying any wrongdoing, posting a lengthy comment on his Facebook page. He's calling this a whisper campaign started by one of his political opponents. Now, one of his accusers, we should mention, has worked for a a man that's running against him in the Democratic Party next year, primary. Uh, Leach goes on to say that politics is sadly an ugly business. Again, calls for him to resign, getting louder, including the governor. Dennis, I want to start with you. You've worked at the Capitol for many Mm -hmm. years now. The first uh, of its kind of a story like this coming out of there. It's... uh he, he mentioned a whisper campaign. That is absolutely true. There have been a number of rumors mm-hmm. ar- around the Capitol that, that uh, some things at least three weeks to a month. Is it going to be this weekend? Is it going to be this right. weekend? That's been the last several weekends. We hear it's coming this weekend. Mm-hmm. The report, you mean. Yes, the report. We're hearing, yeah. Um, and and actually, the, the, the whispers are that there are many other names mm-hmm. that, are, that are to come out to pa- past and present lawmakers, but uh, Dalen Leach is is the the first one. I I don't want to say I guarantee, but I, I can assure you that won't be the only name of either past or, or present lawmakers that get named in, in in similar type of situation. I don't want to put Dennis on the spot here, but I have to ask. You've worked over there for so many years. Have you ever seen anything personally that you made you scratch your head, like hmm? I personally haven't, but I certainly have heard. Okay. And, and even in some of my reporting in the last couple of weeks, we've mm-hmm. heard some things, mm-hmm. uh, lists of who not to get on an elevator with. Now, think about that for a minute. Really? How ludicrous is that? Or telling young interns or telling young staffers, you want to go to that person's office in pairs. You don't want to go uh, by yourself. Well, and the interns traveling in pairs, that's one of the things that is alleged to have happened with Dalen Leach. So the the reporting is very thorough. They go through, it's, it's not just one source, it's not just two sources, it's a mix of on the record and anonymous right. allegations. And one of the great dynamics that you mentioned to me earlier, Amanda, is that the, the minute this thing hits, now a number of former staffers are coming forward mm-hmm. to confirm that what is reported right. is in fact accurate. Mm-hmm. So the the numbers have mounted ever since this was published on Sunday morning. Um, but additionally, the, the reporters who put the story together, they went through and spoke with people who the alleged victims spoke with immediately after these instances occurred and talked about how upset they were. And to me, that is an important part of the story. So it's not like, hey, this happened five years ago and now I'm deciding I'm upset about it. At that moment, at that time, there are multiple people confirming, yes, she was upset about this. It struck them so much that they commented to to somebody else. Yes. And so to me, that adds another layer of reporting. I think sometimes people think, um, journalists hear you know one person complain about one thing and suddenly it's a story and and they go with it um, this was clearly something that was worked on for a long mm-hmm. period of time yeah. mm-hmm. talking to several different people what I think makes it interesting is it hits areas that are considered quote gray areas and sometimes people say this is a gray area as a way to shut down the conversation about sexual harassment or sexual misconduct allegations 
And I think if it's a gray area, it means we need to talk about it more because it's clearly something you know, when you say that gray is questionable. Area, you mean like an off-color joke, right? Or a touch so, on for the shoulder, example, or... one of the staffers who came forward to confirm an account. So this is in the follow-up report. Claims that there was a coffee shop nearby that Senator Leach would look out at and they would have an event with mothers and their toddlers and it was called Milk and Cookies. And this staffer claims that Dalen Leach would call it Milf and Cookies to his uh, employees openly and, and make kind of crude jokes about the women and make it a point to go over to the coffee shop. Something like that, it's uncomfortable. Is it harassment directed at one person? Is it something that should be or shouldn't be allowed in the office? I know I have my opinions about that. Or if you don't laugh at it, are you treated differently than people who did right. laugh at mm-hmm. it? Now, one thing the story did point out is is the, the women who came forward, they said, look, I wasn't denied promotions. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, this did not affect my career trajectory, but it made me uncomfortable. And um, they, in some cases, there, there are indications there were HR investigations but um, there are, there's no outline of any consequences of those HR investigations. So at some point, someone reported something. Well, I, I, well, I just want to say one of the things that is making some people uncomfortable, too, is legislatively, he has a very pro-woman record mm-hmm. and yes. pro-progressive. Uh, he has uh, built himself as a champion of mm-hmm. women. I, have to, and I want to start by saying I'm not defending Senator Leach at all. I just want to make some points for people who don't know him. I covered the Capitol for medical marijuana. He was a co-sponsor of the bill. So I had a lot of interaction Mm -hmm. with him. He is a jokester. He even at, even at press conferences. He was a stand-up comedian. Yes. He was a stand-up comedian. Even at press conferences, uh, sometimes he would make jokes. I mean, and that's the media and everybody's there. And you'd be like, uh, nothing that I thought was like sexually. Right. But he always is going for a laugh. I will say that about him. And I just want to read part of his Facebook. He made a uh, lengthy statement on on Facebook, Mm -hmm. and I want to share some of that with you guys. And he, Senator Leach says on his Facebook page, anybody who knows me even a little knows I'm a humorous guy. My humor is no racier than the average person's, but to be clear, it's not pure either. Like most people, I sometimes tell or laugh at body uh, comedy. I am frequently asked to speak publicly in part because of my humor. Every year, the Pennsylvania Legislative Correspondents Association, which counts the reporter who wrote the story about him. Yeah, I'm a member yeah. of that as well. Yep. Invites yep. me to do stand-up comedy for their annual fundraiser. And he's very funny. He's and the funniest guy on the stage. nobody has ever complained <laughs> about my humor. Dennis, you think he's going to be invited back? <laughs> Well, I think he'll be invited back. I don't think after these reports he's going to come right, back. But yeah. That, yeah. Well, so, I mean, he was known, and I'm not right. making excuses. He was known as a jokester. He's invited to this. I think you're talking about gray areas is when somebody is a comic and they like to make people laugh. When are they crossing the line or when is it in, in I don't know. And one of the things brought up in this reporting, and I want to go through some of the specifics so people get an idea because there are there are lots of different things. There There's a wealth of accusations. It's not just just and they he joked one time or mm-hmm. he hugged me one time um but w- the the line in here that i thought was interesting um was when, when referring to the accusers each said that he created and promoted a culture in his office that objectified women and that he often framed his comments as harmless jokes mm-hmm. And when we talk about jokes and when we talk about office humor, that is where we tend to get into the gray areas. But if the overall culture that's being created is making people uncomfortable, when does it stop being a joke? Mm -hmm. And it clearly was something that didn't just happen only one time. So there are allegations he touched women's thighs, Mm -hmm. touched their backsides, Um, A woman who worked for Senate Democrats in 2015 said Leach inappropriately touched her in a Senate office. At least one eyewitness reported the encounter, and a human resources officer for the Senate interviewed the woman. Um, On the opening night of the 2012 Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina, Leach allegedly made inappropriate sexualized comments to a female intern, and the intern said they were concerned and responded by basically traveling in pairs Mm -hmm. for the remainder of the convention. So they don't say exactly what was said, but it was enough for more than one person to take action as a result. Um, He would have comments about famous women he'd like to have relations with, to put it politely. I'm not going to use the word (laughs) that is described Mm -hmm. here. 
Um, and they said Leach's sexualized comments became so uncomfortable, they tried to limit his time around interns and volunteers and fretted over hiring attractive young women for fear of how he'd behave mm-hmm. around them. So even though the existing staff didn't feel consequences, how many perfectly qualified women had basically to to bear the brunt of this because there were concerns they were, quote, too attractive in order to be around a leech if these and allegations are true. is that enabling behavior, too, if I'm going to mm-hmm. s- steer who I'm putting within them? That means somebody knows, somebody higher up knows Enabling's the situation and they're it. not uh, dealing yeah. with it. Well, Leach says in his comment on Facebook, it is true that sometimes I touch people when I talk to them. A class forum, I pat on the back, but never anything inappropriate or sexual. I now know that some people subjectively find such touching unpleasant, and he mentions Representative Daryl Metcalf. We all saw that video. Um, That comparison makes me cringe. That comparison makes me cringe because the Daryl Metcalf video, and um, we'll link to it for those of you who are not aware of it. It was two. Someone touched his forearm, and he turned it into um, a discussion about that person's sexual orientation and basically implied that they must be gay. And said, don't touch me anymore, basically. And that was in a public meeting. Correct. That's a little different than allegations that you touch someone's thigh or someone's backside. Mm -hmm. That's not a forearm grab. Um, And in this case, if human resources in at least one case that we know of got involved, that would lead me to believe, if, if that portion of this is correct, that he was aware at some point that people were uncomfortable with his behavior. Mm -hmm. And once you become aware that someone's uncomfortable with your behavior, if you don't change it, well, how much of that is on you? To me, there's an entire problem, and this is going to come out in the coming weeks, along with the other names that will, no doubt, some of Mm -hmm. which will come out, is that that structurally there's a problem in dealing with it. And this, we, I believe we discussed this last week with Leanne kruger Brennicke's bill. I, I get confused as to what was on the podcast and what did I do on the newscast. But I know, <laughs> I know at some venue we talked, we talked about, about bill. her, her mm-hmm. bill. And and during it, she's the one who said, during the press conference last week, she said, you know, that's why she couldn't be with us last week. She was supposed to be right. with us and, and mm-hmm. then couldn't. Uh, you know, no more, no more whispers, no more saying, oh, you don't get on the elevator with that one. And oh, by mm-hmm. the way, we have four caucuses, two parties. We've got Capitol Police. You have tourists. You have staff members. There's thousands of people in the building. If something like this happens to a woman a lobbyists if something happens do they know where to go and the mm. answer is they pretty much don't yeah and and so there needs to be a better system for dealing with this it is a real thing and heretofore hasn't really been taken seriously i know the house republicans gave me a, a two 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 sheet um a thing of their policy and i think one of the policies is the majority leader will determine how best to proceed uh, what majority right. leaders have human resources training on this stuff mm-hmm. i mean that's that's basically uh they, they police themselves for right. the most part whether and it's it right to nose and it implies or they can this, protect themselves they too police if they want themselves to. and they basically and that is that is a that is a recipe well, for disaster and look i think we we do need to have a conversation about due process Because due process is important. And if you have a case where one person is accusing Mm -hmm. someone of something one time and there's a knee-jerk reaction, Mm -hmm. that's going to ruin it for everybody else um, where you have mountains of complaints and behavior Mm -hmm. that's going on. That said, if you only care about due process when it's a member of your party getting accused, Mm -hmm. you probably don't care that much about due process. And if you only care about resignations when it's a member of the opposite party getting accused, then you probably don't care that much about helping the victims. Well, that hasn't, we haven't had a reaction to that yet, right? I mean, the the Democratic governor has called for his Democratic state senator to to, to resign. Correct. But especially when you look at what's being posted on social media, when you have um, Leach's attorney saying that this is a witch hunt, Mm -hmm. um, I do think there is a a conversation we need to have about due process because that is important. At the same time, when you have so many people coming forward and saying, hey, this happened and I have four people who can confirm this, at what point do you say, Right, okay, but it, we have, we have mounting we're evidence. Gra- we're all going to be grappling with this whole concept. So on the continuum, if sexual assault is over here, mm-hmm. where are we with, okay, he said something inappropriately or he right. touched right. me on the arm, but it, it didn't go beyond as mm-hmm. far as, as that. And then from all evidence, 
nobody's career was retarded as a result. Mm-hmm. No I, existing I, staffer. Okay. Right. Okay. So, I, so it's it's going to be div- You know, I mean, it's it's case by case. I right. think is where we are. And here's the thing: like, if you tell a joke, okay, and what it takes somebody to say uh, that joke is, you know, it's not appropriate, mm-hmm. and then they stop. Okay, then what's the big deal? But if you make it known that you're uncomfortable and it continues, then that becomes a harassment. Well, I think people people tend to ask, you know, why don't people report things at the time? Th- this report indicates that at least some people did report certain conduct at the time. But when we talk about that, quote, gray area, where we're like, okay, it was an off-color joke, it's a big step for someone to report something to human resources because even though retaliation isn't supposed to be allowed, you know there are a ton of ways around that. You don't know what's going to happen to you. So if someone is unsure where something falls, chances are they're going to err on the side of not reporting it because you don't want to be the troublemaker. So that's why a lot of these things don't get reported until you start talking to other people saying, hey, wait, this happened to me. Oh, this happened This happened to you? But they oh, knew this it also already. happened to you? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there has to be a change. And I think it was, I think Costa said that they've launched an investigation. Yeah. Senator fact, Costa. I, I, I just spoke with the uh, spokeswoman for how, or Senate Democrats, and, and she said they are working on, they're going to do, uh, they're actually, they may even have a hearing on the thing, but they're going to mm-hmm. do a, a, a deep review on how they deal with these things. Mm-hmm. And, uh, top to bottom change but you know they're they're evaluating let's put it that way it is difficult and i even like i reevaluate how i talk to my friend like i have friends that i hug all the time and i'm like wait should i not be hugging them i mean, it's but what i'm saying is i think everybody is now starting to reevaluate um how you interact with each yeah. other well. And I'm maybe, like, and maybe that's happen. not a bad thing. <laughs> and I don't I'm not right. saying that's a bad thing. Um but I've done I've but, I've touched other people and never right. thought anything of it. Right. And, and maybe we, I made them feel uncomfortable and didn't realize it. Well, a right. And uh, to some degree, and we were discussing this in the newsroom earlier, man, uh, you know, is, is is it almost like a game of musical chairs and the music has stopped and you can't take back things you did right. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 years ago, whatever mm-hmm. it is. So now where are we with that? Well, I'm interested to see. Do you think we'll see some a resignation this week? Or, I mean, the governor's he's in I the Leach is it, in the middle of running for Congress. Mm-hmm. This comes out. He's saying it's not true. He's you know defending himself, saying it didn't happen. But the governor's saying step down. Do you think we'll see that happen this week? I personally don't. I, I, again, I, on a number of stories I've done just recently, you you come back to the thing that these people only have one boss, and that's the voters, mm-hmm. right? The right. Voters are the ones that decide you know, what what they think. True. What I find interesting is a, a lot of this can devolve into what about ism or victim blaming or whatever kind of catchy buzz phrase of the moment that's been thrown around. And Dale and Leach has used those. He has called people out for quote victim blaming. And I took several calls over the weekend from people who said they believe his statement was quote victim blaming. Yeah, well, he and does what say. About is, um, yeah, he did say that uh, the one person who accused him. He said that uh, in the office when the humor was flying, she was at least as racy as anyone else. Right, which discounts you know the other people who accused him. But it it just I think that the the conversations we have about this can very quickly go down this slope of oh well what now people can't tell jokes we should just allow everything. Well, no, that's not a logical response we should question what we're doing in the same way that you know women for years we've had to question can i do this can i do that did i invite that did i make it seem like that was acceptable and now like the shoes on the other foot and i don't know that that's necessarily bad and it's not just men who do this to women Uh yes but i don't know that automatically means anybody that's accused of that automatically has to resign either. right and right. I, mean, I think where, that's, where are we with that's that? the other problem the, the, and that seems to be right now the instant reaction is to call for resignation which can also be dangerous well it can be dangerous but it also it means we're not getting to the heart of the actual issue because we have the resignation we avoid the hard conversation we don't change anything about how right, the system actually works well that's what needs to happen not to say that someone should or should not resign i we talk about it being case by case 
but that's the symptom of the problem. Let's look at the actual root. Let's look at, you know, why we tend to question someone more when they make a claim about sexual harassment than we do when someone makes a claim about being mugged. Let's well, look because at- being mugged is black and white. They took my wallet. They walked away with my money. Sexual harassment can be different to different people. But in their some definition cases, of it. it is black and white. You know, it's like he touched yes, my butt. Okay, that's, that's harassment. Different. I'm not talking about physically <laughs> right. touching somebody. I'm talking about some of the things that people say. Yeah. It's not black and white. I could tell a joke to somebody and they think it's funny. The next person could be offended by it. That's where you're talking right. earlier about the gray issue. And so if I tell area. a joke and there's 10 women in the room and nine of them laugh and one's offended, was I wrong for telling that right. joke? I, right. Uh, but I think it's worth noting in all of these cases that we've discussed, it's never been one joke or even two jokes or even three jokes. All of them that we've discussed here have been accompanied by some kind of touching, some kind of behavior that someone allegedly that someone could objectively say that was sexual or that was harassment. And I think that's where the conversation kind of goes off the rails when suddenly Mm -hmm. it's like, well, what about telling jokes? Well, but that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is several pages of very specific allegations that included touching. Yeah, and I'm talking overall when we talk, when we get on this topic, there is a difference from touching somebody and saying something. That's where I think people are like, how are you? How do I know what I can say anymore? I'm not specifically talking about leech. I'm talking right. in general. Like, like you said, you tell a joke, nine people laugh, nine women laugh, one's offended. I mean, what are you supposed to do in that situation? Yeah. I guess you just don't tell the don't joke. Tell jokes. <laughs> well, I I was uh, watching. I don't know if either one of you saw the uh, the series Master of None, um, but my husband and I were watching it on Netflix the other week and um, th- there's an older lady and she's walking and she's complaining about everyone being politically correct now and she says why why do we have to call them Native Americans we used to call them Indians and the guy she's walking with said I think it's because they prefer being called Native Americans and she said I don't care I want to call them Indians <laughs> and I think sometimes there's a I little think I'm related to her I yeah. think there's uh, please don't be no I, think... I, I have relatives that are like <laughs> oh, that okay. is my point okay that's better <laughs> But well, we all do. We all have relatives <laughs> like that. But I think the the point is that when someone is flat out saying, "This is uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Do not do this," there is still a reaction saying, "But what if I still want to do it anyway?" Right. And you know, it's like, well, I feel like a normal human so, reaction if you're making someone uncomfortable is to be like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. I will stop because I don't did, want." Did you, you guys to be see the movie Poseidon Adventure? So it's a, there's an no. awesome scene when the wave hits the boat. This big wave hits the boat. Nice. I think that's where workplaces are going to be here. Yes. And, the, yeah. and so, is it enough if Dalen Leach says, "I get it. No more jokes. No more nothing." Mm-hmm. We just we just work at work and and that's it. Mm-hmm. Is that is that enough? Well, I feel like that would have um, maybe led to a different reaction than the statement he did release. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if if that would have been considered enough. And it, it depends on who you talk to. It depends on what day. And unfortunately, sometimes not always, but sometimes in general, it depends on what party you're talking to as well or what party that person is. Um, we got lots of calls over the weekend from people who were saying, you know, of course he did this. He's a corrupt Democrat. <laughs> and people saying, oh, those Republicans are upset with him. Like, they're corrupt. And it's like, no, it has nothing to do with party. This has nothing to do with... Yeah, I think with- that's a bipartisan problem. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not... Uh, corruption knows no party. Sexual harassment knows no party. Terrible behavior knows no party. It's across the board. It's just a matter of who is the topic du jour at this point. Well, I think, um, as we said earlier, there's been whispers about this for some time. Um, I will say that I've worked at the Capitol for some time. I've never experienced anything other than, I think, minor things like a a male lawmaker saying, oh, you should smile more. I mean, those kind of stuff. And Amanda, you and I have talked about this before. As women, we've always been kind of taught just to not make the situation more uncomfortable or more awkward. I'm trying to get an interview. Am I really going to say to the lawmaker, really? maybe you should smile more you know yeah it's, it's so it's you have a job to do you're trying but I've never experienced anything like these people are describing right. and I've never had any issues over there we obviously know that more names will be coming out that's what we're hearing um I think the good thing about this is that they're now looking at their policies how they handle things and I think it's an eye-opener for all of us. Well, and, and an eye-opener for taxpayers may be that they also have done some secret settlements that they're using taxpayer right. money to 
to, to do those settlements, which in my view, but I'm a very hard liner on this, if there's dollar one spent of taxpayer money, we all have a right to know where it's spent. Mm-hmm. Somehow, of course, they lawyer up and then all, and, and make it almost impossible for you to get at the information. Um, but there have been settlements and there, there, there's, there's secretive things going on in this regard. And uh, that needs to end. Right. Agreed. So even if you're not working at the Capitol, this it does affect you, affect you because oh, no it's question. your money. Mm-hmm. And it's the tone that's set by the, the people but, you elect. Well, let me ask you a bigger question, too, because here, here's what I've been talking about. And, and any rational human being should be having this conversation, if only in their own head. You know, we're, we're finding out about the Harvey Weinsteins and we find out about the Al Frankens and so the politicians and the entertainers. Do you not think this is happening at uh, you name your top five major corporations in our Absolutely. you don't think it's also there sure. you won't hear about it to the extent that you do these other ones right. but i think this is a sea change getting back to my uh, right. poseidon adventure mm-hmm. reference i think this is a sea change for sure. workplaces across america and i think every male uh, even if it's in the privacy of their own thoughts is mm-hmm. uh, going back over your years of sure. of interactions with with uh, scores of em- uh, fellow employees uh, but if if and regardless of what happened in the past, you certainly are change. If you're smart, you're changing anything. If there's a problem, yeah, you're changing it hope. moving forward. Well, I mean, I don't want to. I've talked to a lot of my guy friends, and um, and some of them will. I, and I hate to have this example, but like with Trump and what he said in the, in the, um, what was inside it when he was saying yeah. rap. Yeah, okay. But I, one of some of my guys' friends. We don't like, need to rehash yeah, that yeah, one. Okay. No. Yeah. But I but I challenged them. I said, "Tell me, you never said anything like that." to your guy friends ever when you were in your 20s and they're all quiet and I'm like you just didn't get caught saying it like I've said things that I I think part of this is living and learning I mean these guys are the capital they're 50 they're right. old enough to know better but that kind of segues into our next topic which is exactly. how do we talk to our kids about this well, it's because, all over the headlines well, and beca- because a lot of times when, when that talk is considered acceptable it's the whole locker room talk yeah. boys will be boys I don't think that men by just pure nature are more inclined to say that stuff i think a lot of it is societal Mm -hmm. and and what we view as acceptable because from a very young age the images that are seen the conversations that are had Mm -hmm. um it i read a really great article um and i'll link to it in the show notes that talks about how it actually is really tough right now to be a guy mm-hmm. because when you're growing up as a young boy, there are very specific images of masculinity. You know, in this age now, it's it's like, oh, good, you have a, a daughter who loves dolls and loves sports. It's not really thought of the same if you have a young son who loves dolls and mm-hmm. loves sports. There's a very different stigma attached to that. Um, and what we view as masculinity and how we raise our boys, I think that does affect things later on if we're perpetuating this thing that, that girls should be more nurturing and, and guys should be, quote, more tough. Well, I think, I mean, Dennis, you have a, a son, two, two sons. Two boys, two one sons. girl. Yeah. Actually, first of all, on the girl, I, I, I'm all for this because – Hopefully, when she's into the workforce, she won't be dealing with the things that her right. mm-hmm. four f- sisters dealt with. Mm-hmm. Well, so there's benefits there. Have you ever watched Mad Men? Yeah. And just like the whole office. How, the culture. Yeah, the culture of the office. back. It's hard for me to watch it sometimes. Like secretaries were there just to get a husband and they were – it's crazy. Well, and I wonder what like people that. will say about our generation I know. years from now. Well, I think um, the tide is changing and I think it's very important to talk – by no means are we experts. We're just weighing in on the issue. I'll just put that out there. You can find tons of things on the internet and that can guide you on how to talk to your kids. But I think you have to talk to them now. They're seeing it all over the headlines, even if you try to protect them. And I think you have to talk to both the girls and the boys differently about it. But I just want to mention one thing I found really quickly. It's called um, a website, Child Mind Institute. And this is actually kind of what I do with my kids. They said one of the things you can do is first ask them what they've heard or know about it and see Mm -hmm. what they tell you first. Um, Ask them what they think about it. And mm-hmm. then tell them what you think about it. That way it's kind of just a it's natural a conversation. conversation. Like, hey, I that's what I used to do with my son all the time. Did you hear about, I heard this happen. Did, what did you hear about it? And then he'll say, this is what I heard. Well, some of that's true. Some of it's not. What did you think? And then here's what I have to say about it. But I think it is hard sometimes. I'm not a man and I'm not, I didn't grow up. But it's hard when you see women being objectified all the time. 
on TV, in magazines, and then at the same time you're like, but you have to respect them. I think that's a hard lesson to teach when we're putting boobs up here and there and women are objects, and then you're also turning around and saying, but women aren't objects. They're equals, you have to treat them with respect. You don't think there's a contradiction out there right now? I think there is. I Come think- on, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> this is always the part of the conversation when Dennis is the most quiet. This is when he smirks. And yes. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that to me, the bigger question is about consent. So, and, and that's a conversation that I think is, is relatively new. And by that, it's, um, you know, what, what is yes, what is no. And not just when talking about sex, when talking in general about the pressures of dating or even when it comes to touching. Um, I think before it was thought that, you know, maybe that was a talk you had before you went off to college. And now we're learning it needs to be younger and younger for young men and for young women. Um, it bothers me when there's a mentality, and I don't think this is what you were saying, but um, uh, there, there, Marcy Captor um, from Toledo, Ohio, where I used to live and work, um, she's a U.S. lawmaker. She uh, got some flack last week for saying that um, she's seen women with their cleavage down to the floor, mm-hmm. and she said that makes it seem like an invitation. That language bothers me because to me that's that's like saying that if you drive a nice car, it's an invitation to have it broken into. Well, it's well, an no. invitation to look, but it's not an invitation to touch. <laughs> right. If you have your boobs out, you're saying, "Look at them." I'm sorry. Right. But it do, but, it, but that's not saying you can touch. It's them. not saying you yeah. can touch them. Or you know, if you have a nice lawn, you, that that doesn't mean that you're just inviting people to step onto your lawn. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, you still have a right to say, Stay "Get off, off my, my yeah, freaking yeah. yard." <laughs> And so, are you arguing that there's no such thing as sexualized in the way you look? No, 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 not in, at all. In, in ex- but I don't, I don't like the argument that that is an invitation because, again, you have a nice lawn. That doesn't mean that you're inviting everyone to step on it. You'd probably get mad because it's still your property. But and you, you can't still get mad rights. if somebody says, "Hey, you have a nice lawn." Right. That's all. But the invitation is not to touch or not to have your way with it. So that's where I think it becomes more of a nuanced conversation. I love I that we're using a lawn. I don't have lawn. a nice lawn. <laughs> <laughs> but even if you have a nice car, like that's, I sure understand. someone will look at your car right. and, and they if can say, you hey, have nice a shiny car. red one, maybe you'll get pulled over a little more. <laughs> but that's not an invitation to break into it because the, the point is that that wasn't, for yours for the I agree. taking. I agree. And I think sometimes the way we talk about that um, can give the impression to young men that it is theirs for the taking. And that's what I was trying to say. I think right. for young boys, it can be confusing if you're getting like these mixed messages. You see this on TV, you see that, and then and you're apparently like, older boys have and problems older boys. as well. Well, and I, I mean, think you don't con- agree with that, Dennis? For I, young I, I boys, it could yeah. be confusing. I think it's confusing for young women too. Well, absolutely. Because, and, and we've talked about this before, we had a conversation about how sexting is becoming more prevalent with high schoolers and middle schoolers or even starting to talk about it in elementary school now. Uh-huh. Um, you know, so for for young girls they're being asked for nude pictures like you they would be and asked for their and, phone oh number gosh, in the past yeah. and oh this is what needs to happen in order for boys to like you is yeah. what so it, it's not like these temptresses are out there right. luring <laughs> these innocent young boys and sometimes that's the narrative that's put out well no it's it, it's just as confusing as i think for the young women and that's why when we have these conversations it's not just girls you need to have self-respect boys will right. be boys no yes. <laughs> it's 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 about everyone having self-respect but respect for each yes. other i just for the record i wasn't laughing at amanda what she was saying i was laughing at dennis's face <laughs> well i i have had the conversation with my wife i said i don't, I don't want my daughter to think because these models these super quote-unquote supermodels are out there that that's the way you're supposed to look. You know, the, the people mm. that, you know, their idea of lunch is a right. cigarette and a Diet Coke. Right, you know, yeah. That, that's not... Right. The whole body uh, image yeah. thing, yeah. It's very confusing. There's a lot, a lot of stuff out there, and I think 
as adults, we have to help the kids navigate it and be honest with them. Like, yeah, we get it. It's very confusing. We're telling you one thing, but you might be seeing something else and you might be like, wait, you're telling me this, but I'm seeing other images. Like what's going on here? I think it's just very important to have a conversation, even all generations to have a conversation about this topic, because I think it's a little bit different for each of us Mm -hmm. um, and what we grew up with. Um, So I think it's good that these things are happening in the sense that they're being revealed. We're looking at the policies and how we handle these things. um, But I still think there's always going to be these gray areas. And I think it's also when we talk about like the media that kids consume, I think we're so used to saying, okay, we'll screen it for bad language or we'll screen it for inappropriate nudity. But what about the underlying content? You know, my my mom, when when I was growing up, my mom didn't let me watch Grease, not because of some of the other stuff in there, (laughs) but because she didn't like that the the message. Well, no, at the end, she changes herself for for a man and it's seen as this positive thing. Oh, I love that movie. (laughs) She was like, that's the worst message. You are not, no, you will not watch that. Um, And so it's those kinds of things that I think we don't always think to look out for, but they send very strong messages. And even though that that portion of the movie isn't directly related to sex, it does tie into it and ties into how you think of yourself and how you think you should be valued and how you think someone should treat you. Just let the record show that this podcast was about appropriate conversations and it was a Kendra that said the word boobs and Amanda that said the word milf it was not the old guy that said um, any of that Dalen Leach allegedly was the person who said, <laughs> said the no, word said milf <laughs> I am reading a quote as a journalist Dennis <laughs> but we also uh, part of the reason I think part of what we like about having this podcast is we can have those real conversations mm-hmm. and if if we if we run away from having those conversations then are we really getting at the root of an issue? Right. Probably not. Well, this is definitely a to be continued because yeah. it's not over yet. We'll see um what happens in the days to come, but I think overall it's good that um more of more light is being shown on this topic. It's 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 uh I think it's going to lead to positive change. Hopefully. We'll see. Yeah, my worry is that eventually there's going to be something that is proven to be a false accusation that is widely reported or picked Um, up on. I'm sure it will happen. Or that there is going to be um, what the public views as an overly harsh reaction to something that wasn't that big of a deal. And Mm -hmm. then all of a sudden every bit of ground that's been gained yeah. in having these conversations One is going to be lost. Five steps it's going to be yeah. considered a witch hunt. That is well, that is I, my see, concern. I, I, I just, it's not going to be lost because people are already thinking about what am I doing at work and yeah. it's going to change. Mm-hmm. That's going to happen. And that's, They're thinking about it when, now. When somebody, because here's the other thing. Right at the moment, fortunately there's been, to my knowledge, not, none of no false allegations, but there will be. At some mm-hmm. point, going, somebody's going to say any, something. For any uh-huh. crime or for and, anything, there's going to be something and false. And there are some concerns right now that if it's someone that's a high-profile person and one person says something against them, it's fire first and ask questions later. <laughs> right, which is dangerous. And, and that is a little concerned. Right, but I do think we need to point out with the reporting on this. Um, and it's, it's been a conversation solid, and we had multiple. in our newsroom. It's been, it's been very well sourced. I hope that journalists everywhere continue to have that same level of skepticism you know Mm -hmm. the washington post caught someone trying to give them deliberately mislead them with a false accusation to see if they would print it Mm -hmm. and i think that has everyone on alert which is good Mm -hmm. but you know the first person who comes forward they sometimes will get more scrutiny than maybe the 20th person absolutely sure and you need to have that same level of scrutiny for every because mm-hmm. every case is individual it, yes. Yes. too. Yep. Yes, right. but nothing we've seen reported has been just one person making an accusation about one time with nothing to back it up. Mm-hmm. I do want to point that out because sometimes that can be the narrative, and and nothing I've seen from any credible media outlet has even come close to that. And I would just like to end by saying I I am thankful to all these women that do come forward. Um, proud of them. I know it's not always easy. Um, and we certainly are not trying to victim blame at all. We're just having a conversation about this topic and how there are gray areas. And sometimes uh, I don't know if we'll ever get the answer to those. Yeah, but we still need to talk about it. All right. If you'd like to check out the links to the stories, articles, and videos we discussed, you can find them in our show notes on our website, abc27.com. To get on deadline, deliver directly to your phone, tablet, or computer each week, subscribe in iTunes or Google Play Music. 
Please take a few minutes and leave us a review in iTunes. We definitely read them, and your thoughts help us figure out what we're doing well and what we can improve. If you have any news tips for the ABC 27 investigators or any questions, topics you'd like to discuss or us to discuss on our weekly podcast, please send us a message on the ABC 27 investigators Facebook page. Or they can also email us. Amanda, it's the investigators. Yes, the investigators, T H E investigators at abc27.com. We love it when you record voice memos on your phone mm-hmm. um, and then email them to us because then we get to literally hear from yeah, you. Yeah, I like that too. Um, mm-hmm. And you can elaborate a little more. So if you are so inclined with any thoughts about what we've discussed or even questions about mm-hmm. new things you want us to talk about, um, send that in because it, it makes it a lot more fun and interesting. Yeah, I do like hearing the voices. All right, thank you, Eric Semmel, for producing the podcast, and Jason Dietz for composing and recording the music. It is time for us to go. We're on deadline.